Friend, we are back out in the grow room and we've got quite a bit we're gonna do to finish out this room and make it a lot prettier. So today is Tuesday. I just started all of my tomatoes for this year's garden out here. And on Friday, we are getting new floors in here. And so many of you all said, I need to paint this shelf because it kind of stands out and it's a little bit of an eyesore. So today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and paint this shelf just so it doesn't, the contrast is not so striking. And then on Thursday or sometime this week, Josh and I need to move this hot water heater so that they can put the new floors in and we need to move this behemoth metal desk that the previous owners left because it's so heavy. So I don't even know if we're gonna be able to move this. I sure hope we can't because we really wanna make sure we can get the flooring underneath this because in the future, if I ever get a greenhouse, I'm not gonna be starting my seeds in here. And so this room, we would like to use it for something. I don't know what, but we wanna try to get the flooring all the way underneath that if possible. And we need to put the trim, the baseboards in here. So we've got a lot, we got to, and we've got to empty this. We've got hundreds and hundreds of seedlings we're gonna to have to move out of here before they can put the new flooring in here. And so that's what we're gonna be doing now is you're gonna see all the way transforming this shelf, removing everything and getting the new flooring and probably baseboards as well. I have a big dinner party that I'm hosting for Josh's birthday this weekend. And the day that I'm doing the majority of the prep is the day that we're getting the new flooring. And so I wasn't gonna paint in here because I was thinking, you know what? I probably should not bite off this project, but I actually have a couple hours this afternoon where I am available that I could do this. And so I would rather paint this shelf before we get the new flooring because I don't wanna be painting in here once we get the new flooring fertilizer. I just fertilized all my seedlings with an organic fertilizer and it's a fish kelp fertilizer and it smells a little fishy in here. Okay, I think there's nothing at the top shelf. I asked Josh what color he thought I should paint this and if I should paint it the color of the walls or white. And we both decided we're gonna paint it white, which is awesome. I didn't even tell him this, but I have white paint, so I don't even need to buy paint for this. Whew, there's cobwebs up here. I'm so excited for it to look nice in here. And I think a big key to that is getting these painted floors out of here and stained floors out of here. So I have a drop cloth, not that I really need it because we're gonna be ripping these floors out, but I don't want a bunch of big splatters on the floor. So I am gonna put the drop cloth down. I went ahead and I grabbed a roller, the paint, some paint brushes. I don't want paint to get on my new hose. I need to paint some wood that's on the wall, the paint the wall color, so I grabbed that out. I also am painting the shelf, the trim paint, which is a glossy paint, which is great because that won't hold on to dust as much. It'll be easier to clean. Ooh, I think I'm gonna open this door. You get a little fresh air in here. Since I'm gonna paint this, I'm going to remove these screws so that those don't get painted. I've never used them, I don't plan to use them, and so I'm just gonna remove those. So never mind, Josh will help me. Thank you. This is oh. really in there. And then would you be willing to remove those up there for me? Oh. Thank you. Oh yeah, that's smart. I was, yeah. 
perfect. Thank you. Any more? Nope, that's it, I think. Well, that was really easy to get that done. So I am gonna use a roller. I was thinking I almost was just gonna brush it because I didn't feel like getting a roller out. But for the two minutes it was gonna take me to get a roller out, it would take me an extra probably hour to paint this with a paintbrush. But I am gonna need a paintbrush to get into the corners. This is just some paint that we had left over from, from painting the trim that we put in the house. We still need to paint the trim upstairs, but that needs to be installed first. Josh and I were just talking about that, that that needs to be on our summer to-do list to finish out that upstairs. Okay, so we got paint here. I do need to mix this up though. And I did pull out some paint brushes. I think I'm gonna paint the corners of this shelf first and then go in with the roller. It's okay if I get a little bit of paint on the floor just because we are gonna be ripping this flooring up. I just don't want a ton of it on the floor. Here's what we're working with before. And I'm gonna start painting it and then we're gonna have an after. Now this is not some nice piece of furniture or anything like that. So that is why I am not sanding it or anything like that. This is just, I think, yeah, it's plywood. It's just plywood. And so we're just giving it a little facelift, a zero dollar project, because I already had all that I needed to do this. It'll look nicer and it'll actually be easier to keep clean because it's gonna have that gloss finish. So I am going to just use the brush anywhere where I know the roller is not gonna be able to reach. So any of the crevices. I've gotten all the corners painted, so now we can actually get the roller out and save us a ton of time. And we're gonna be able to just paint this thing very quickly. So I've got a roller and a roller pad. And I'm gonna pour this in here. I think I'm gonna start at the top and work my way down just for drips and things. I think that will go more smoothly. So I'm definitely gonna need two coats. I can already tell you that, which makes sense because this plywood is not primed at all, but that does look a lot better already. To get this done, we end up using three different days where we've got a little pockets of time here and there in order to get these things done we need to get done. So the first thing is I had a little pocket of time where I could paint this cabinet. And then we have a little pocket of time on Thursday after I do a bunch of meal prep for this massive dinner party that I'm having this coming weekend. And after I do all that meal prep, Josh and I are able to come out and remove that black cabinet. You're gonna see how we were able to do that relatively easily, surprisingly. And then on Friday, when the flooring people are here, we're able to get everything put back together. And so we're just taking these little pockets of time that we have throughout the week in order to make this happen, even with a big party happening this weekend. I like the brush stroke look better than the roller look on this. So I'm going through each area and just taking my brush and running it along the outside. I've got one coat of paint on this shelf and it definitely needs a second coat, but I need it to obviously fully dry before I can add that. But that white is gonna look a lot better right here as opposed to that natural wood. So what I'm gonna do now while this is drying is I'm gonna paint this piece of wood here that's on this wall. I don't know why I didn't paint it earlier. I don't really know what it's there for and I didn't take it down. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just paint it the same color as the wall, which is 
Gossamer Veil. I've got the gallon here. I'm just gonna mix it in, in the gallon. Let's see if I have something that I can use to open this. I probably am gonna let this completely dry overnight, or maybe I'll come out tonight to paint the second coat on it. I'm just gonna come back here with the brush. And we're gonna make this piece of wood disappear. I'm just going through over here and making sure there's no drips and if there's a drip, I am kind of brushing it away because those will show up in the final paint job. I do wanna save some of this paint that I didn't end up using. And then I'll probably just on my own come out here and paint the second coat on there because it's not gonna look much different and I'll just show you what that looks like. See all that paint in there? I'm just gonna throw this glove away. So just get that paint back in the bucket. Alrighty friend, it is like two days later, I think, since last time we were in here painting that cupboard, shelf, whatever you wanna call it, I don't even know. And Josh is on his way out here. I just turned the fan off for the grill room. I never got to painting a second coat on this, which I need to do, so I'm gonna do that tonight. But Josh and I need to first move this hot water heater out of here and we need to somehow figure out how to move this so that ideally they can put the flooring up underneath this shelf. This thing is all metal, extremely heavy, so it's gonna be quite an adventure trying to learn how to figure out how to move that. And Josh is here. Measure. I'm gonna get a tape measure. The reason we want a tape measure is because we're not even sure Becky, uh, <laughs> measuring. Becky measurement. <laughs> and then Unless, go to the door. Show it? Yeah, go to the door. <laughs> so we're not sure if that is going to, to be able to fit. Oh, did you just shrink your hands? What? I don't know. <laughs> oh, Josh. <laughs> Wait, you thought I was seriously going to do it that way? No, I didn't think you were going to do that. <laughs> Let me go get a um, tape measure. Okay. We're back in business. All right. Let's see, I guess we could take this piece of wood off the back if we need to. Actually, oh, this, whole, this whole top might come off, but let's just see. The reason that previous owners right. did not move this is because it was so heavy. So we how? Think. We think it's, a, oh yeah, that, we'll have plenty of room. We this have is, margin? Yes, we have plenty of room. This is like 35 and a half. Okay, perfect. And that's 29 and a half, so. Okay. So do you want to do that first or a hot water heater? What's? Well, let's drain the hot water heater. Okay. And then I think probably. Move on, move on from Do there. that because we definitely. Have you ever done that before? No. No. <laughs> okay. No. I'm just hoping that I can screw the hose on there and that this is also a valve. Okay. Somehow. Okay. Awesome. I'm guessing it is but we'll find out. So apparently you're supposed to drain your hot water heaters every year. And so this is a good skill to have. So true. <laughs> Did you just hear that somewhere? Or? Yeah, someone was talking about it on a video or a reel or something. I don't remember exactly where I heard it, but I heard it somewhere. Well, I don't know if it's actually twisting. It really should. Well, Josh is working on draining the hot water heater. I'm gonna start moving things that I can move. They are gonna be here tomorrow between, what time did they say they were coming? Eight and 11. Eight and 11. Or they might just take them eight to 11. Oh. Not sure. Yep, it's coming out. Okay. Like a lot? Yep. Well, it seems to have done it. Good. Um, when I turned on the water, this pressure thing was still open. I just realized that I'm gonna have to move all these planters out of the way or we won't be able to get that hot water tank through here. Not hot water tank, shelf. Do you see how easy it was to wheel those out there? I just got wheels for this one. This one doesn't have wheels. They're on my front porch. I haven't installed them yet. Maybe now would be a good time to do that. Oh, we did check the weather. It's not supposed to rain tonight. So we're just gonna put that shelf unit out here and then put it back.
Now I'm going to go ahead and just water all my seedlings before I unhook this hose. I'm not gonna wheel these plants out until tomorrow morning because it's supposed to get down to 27 tonight. So clearly that's way too cold for them. And I might as well take advantage of having the fact that I have my hose still hooked up. And as soon as I'm done watering these in, I'll unhook the hose and get this hose out of here. I have been doing bottom watering as well, not watering from the top. But right now I'm just, I'm just watering. I'm just getting water on these plants. And we have a bunch of germination on these. I can actually go ahead and take this off. We've got straw flower, tarragon, never grown tarragon before and I've got a bunch of that. Stevia, never grown that before, have a bunch of that sprouted. That's awesome. Stevia? Yeah. Are you excited about stevia, Josh? I'm so stoked about stevia. <laughs> Ooh, you might have to um, take that off for me. Can you unscrew this? I think I screwed it on a little too tight. It, oh yeah, no, turn it off. Turn off the water. Oh right? yeah, yeah, so smart. <laughs> I was about to get soaked. Didn't even consider the fact that there could still be water in the hose. Smart, smart, smart. Okay, so while you're doing that, I'm gonna just take some other stuff out of here. Josh had the brilliant idea of removing the shelves and the contents of this black cabinet before we attempted to move it. And so that's what I'm going to do now and try to reduce the weight of this cabinet as much as possible. And I need to obviously clear off the top of it. These are all the tomatoes we just started. And I had run out of my cinnamon to put on top of my little seedlings. Cinnamon just helps prevent algae and mold growth. And so I went to Costco and I grabbed this big thing of cinnamon. And now since I have it, I'm going to go ahead and take just a second and sprinkle the cinnamon on top, cover them back up. And obviously these tomato seedlings are not going to be able to be on the heat mat for one or two, maybe three nights. And I don't think that's going to affect them too much. It might just slow germination down a little bit, but that will be totally fine. So I'm moving the little seedlings underneath the grow lights, not because they need grow lights, just because when I wheel them out tomorrow morning out of the grow room into the garage, it'll be one less Thing I'll have to carry. I can just wheel the whole thing out. I'm going to move the sweet potatoes and all the seedlings that are on that heat mat are just going to go under the grow lights. I actually did find that my purple basil and my lemon basil sprouted. So that was exciting. So that does actually need to go under the grow lights. I didn't realize the purple basil had sprouted. So it got a little leggy because the purple basil is so dark. So now Josh and I are sitting here attempting to move this and we realize, wow, it is still way too heavy. And so we realize that we can remove the, what is the countertop portion of this cabinet. It's just bolted in and really the majority of the weight is coming from the countertop. And so Josh finds the screws, he unscrews that and then we can move that. And then while Josh was in there exploring the countertop, he realized that each of the individual cabinets is actually separate pieces. And so it's gonna be really easy to remove this. So that was kind of a relief. But we are going to put this cabinet right underneath the eaves of this porch. And we needed to move this green stock. So I went and grabbed my wheels and I put my wheels on the base and we are going to be able to move this easily now. So now that we had to take it apart so we could put the wheels on the base, we're just gonna put it back together and wheel it out of the way. And this is what we were the most nervous about is actually having to move this cabinet. And it was a lot easier than we thought it was going to be. The key definitely was removing all of the shelves and all of the contents of it and then taking it apart and moving it piece by piece. It just made it not a big deal, honestly, at all to move it. 
and these little dollies that Josh had really made this job super, super easy. So once we got the hardest part off, which was the countertop, Josh unbolted the different cabinet pieces and those were relatively light, but we did go ahead and put them on the little dolly. We wheeled them out and we're gonna put them under the covered area. These things are super dusty and dirty. I did not realize how dusty and dirty they are. The previous owner used this space as a woodworking shop, and so they just had a lot of sawdust and stuff like that on them. So I am able to take the next morning and we do get them deep cleaned, which was really, really nice. So I did clean up the carpet area. There was definitely all sorts of treasures that had fallen behind this cabinet over the years. And so we were able to get all that picked up and get all of the cabinets out. So what I thought was gonna be super, super difficult really was not that difficult at all. It just took a little bit of time and then we were able to get the hot water heater out. This hot water heater is not the hot water heater we use for our house. Like for the main house, that hot water heater is actually for the upstairs, which we don't hardly ever go up there because it's not finished. That's what we wanna work on this summer. And so the fact that we removed this is not gonna affect our ability to have hot water in the main house. I am though gonna take the opportunity to go ahead and clean behind it because there were quite a few cobwebs. I was gonna paint this and paint behind the hot water heater and this shelf tonight, but I do not have it in me. So I'm gonna get the fan back on so this fan can be on these plants. So in the morning, I gotta get up early because they're gonna be here at eight. So I need to move the rest of this stuff out and I'll do that in the morning. We're gonna deep clean that shelf tomorrow and then we are gonna be getting new floors tomorrow. So I'll see you in the morning. Good morning, it is time to empty the seed room before the contractors get here and to clean that cabinet. Oop, a little much today. I have some cleaner here that I just made up and some rags and we're gonna take this out to the grow room. But before I do any of that, <laughs> I'm gonna take a few sips of coffee, wake up a minute. I just rolled out of bed. All we know is that they said they're gonna be here from eight to 11. We're not sure if that means they're gonna arrive at our house between eight and 11, or if they are going to show up at eight and it's only gonna take from eight to 11 to do this project. So I need to get all this stuff out of here. I couldn't put this outside last night or in the garage last night because it was below freezing and then I would probably put off cleaning this cabinet and all this stuff until after my big dinner party and I have house guests staying this weekend and I'd probably wait to do it on like Monday or something except it's supposed to rain and so I don't want all of the metal shelving to be outside even though there is cover sometimes the wind blows and blows rain underneath that cover so we need to get that clean this morning so I can't put those grow shelves out on the patio because we've completely blocked off that area. So what I need to do is move my car out of the garage so that I can take these shelves and put them in the garage. I attempt to remove the shelf with the paint supplies on it and then I quickly realize that's probably a bad idea. So I remove all the paint supplies and then I can easily remove the shelf. The shelf has to be tipped on its side in order to get through the door and it's really easy to move. I just needed to have those paint supplies off the shelf. And then one of the biggest amazing things that has happened in my seed starting journey are these wheels on these shelving units. I know it seems like something so small, but it has made transporting a ton of seedlings incredibly quickly. And so this was really nice. I was able to just wheel these out. These plants are gonna be in the garage. I think the garage was like 58 degrees. So it's a little bit colder than ideally my pepper plants and things would like to be at but they're gonna be just fine because it's only gonna be a few hours that they're gonna be out in the garage. But I definitely didn't want them in the garage or outside overnight because that would have been way, way too cold. And then I do realize, yes, I do have my basket up there. I take the basket off so that I can get it out of the room. 
I officially got this room emptied and so now we're just gonna wait for them to show up, rip out the carpet and replace it. I'm glad we were able to remove this shelving unit and the hot water heater. And I don't think I mentioned, but Josh is gonna be putting in baseboards, not this weekend, just cause we've got, you know, house guests in a 30 party, 30 person dinner party. So that'll probably happen next week sometime. But now I'm gonna head out here. I go, oh, I did get the lights turned on in the garage for the seedlings. So those have lights, I have the garage door closed. It's not ideal to have my tomatoes. Oh, I could probably bring them inside. Maybe I'll do that. I've got my tomato seeds that have not germinated yet. And the garage is, I've got a thermometer in there. It's probably like in the 50s, so it's not ideal, but it'll only be for today. So now since I've got access to these metal cabinets, I'm gonna go ahead and clean them because I'm pretty sure, well, yeah, I don't know if, all of that's dirt. This is dirt. This is all dirt. Yuck. These will absolutely get dirty again because obviously I'm gonna be starting more seeds and I use dirt, but at least it won't be dirt from just years of dust. It will actually be like soil dirt. So it won't be dirt, it'll be soil. And so it'll just feel good to have it go back into the room clean. And I was thinking I might be able to actually store like my seeds down in these cupboards instead of actually putting them on that white shelf. So I don't know if I'm actually gonna put that white shelf back in the room. And that might have just been, well, I don't know. Time will tell, you will see exactly how I end up doing that. I'm just kind of, putting cleaner on all of it just to kind of let things soak. I probably could actually turn, well, I don't know, <clears throat> turn a hose on. I don't know if I have the outside water turned on. I'm gonna go through so many rags. I did bring out a bunch of cotton ones, so I'm not using a bunch of just disposable paper towels. And then I'm gonna wear gloves when I do this. I just have garden gloves. That way I can just throw these in the wash when I'm done. Oh yeah. Dirty. It felt so good getting these cabinets cleaned. It's just really nice to know that when they go back into the room, they are going to be clean. And that's why I wanted to prioritize getting them clean. And if I wasn't having a 30 person dinner party the following day from this day and having house guests stay at my house, I probably wouldn't have worried about this except for the fact that it was supposed to rain. And so, I had this day to get this clean and get these shelves back under cover. Even though the patio is covered, they would get rained on and I didn't want this metal getting rained on. And so that's why I needed to get up early and prioritize cleaning this so that they could go back into the room clean. Some of this is rust on here, but some of it is just years and years and years of dust and sawdust and things like that and so it did feel good to go ahead and get everything nice and clean i went through probably 10 rags and then while i was cleaning they showed up to remove the carpet and you can see that this is a concrete floor underneath and the carpet was glued down and they removed this carpet so quickly and one thing i have removed so much carpet in my life if you were with us at the last house you saw that I removed a ton of carpet from that last house but I also removed carpet from our first house and this is so so brilliant so if you ever need to remove carpet I now know this trick because I've never watched a professional remove carpet before they roll up the carpet and then they put a slit in just look at this it's so brilliant I now know next time I need to remove carpet <laughs> this is what I'm going to do because when you remove carpet it just keeps wanting to unroll on you and so you kind of tie a knot with itself and then you can dispose of it properly. So I went and I also cleaned the hot water heater. Well friends, 
<laughs> this apparently is the after. So right here, this seems to be a problem for the install. We have foundation and then they cord poured a concrete slab up to the foundation and they would not lay the flooring until that was addressed. We are gonna move everything back in here. Josh already put these shelves back in here for me on the timers, he got it all set up and we need to move in all that shelving because it could be a week or two or even longer before we're gonna be able to address what we need to do to these floors. And you know, Josh and I don't actually mind the concrete. They scraped up a bunch of the glue. And so Josh and I are thinking maybe we'll see if we can just scrape up all the glue and just leave it a concrete floor in here, put some trim up, maybe put a little rug in here, make it a little more cozy and maybe skip the flooring. We don't know. We don't know. We're not exactly sure where we're gonna go from here. And I now can go ahead and finish painting these, but I don't wanna get paint on the concrete in case we just keep it concrete floors. But I do know that we need to move in all these items that we moved out because it's gonna be raining. And I was able to get them mostly clean. I did a first clean on these. I think I'm gonna clean them one more time because the rags got so dirty that I could just tell they weren't fully cleaning everything. So I'm considering this a first clean and everything back in there and then I'll wipe everything down one more time to give it like a final clean. So we're just gonna move everything back in and figure out what our next step is. But instead of focusing on this for the next few days, we're gonna focus on the party and then we can focus on our guests that are gonna be here over the weekend and then we can reevaluate well, this was not the after I was expecting <laughs> to share with you. I got everything moved back in here. It was relatively easy. I got my fan back in here. I need to turn that on. And we're moving in the right direction, I guess. I'm so grateful to get that carpet out of here. It was so dusty, old, and dingy. And so it does feel cleaner in here just because I've scrubbed those. I'm gonna scrub them one more time. I need to get one more coat of paint on here. I need to get paint behind that. That's why I didn't put the really heavy counter on the top because I'm gonna need to pull that back, pull that back and paint behind there. So not the after I was anticipating, but we're one step closer. And this is how life goes. Sometimes things happen that you don't expect, especially in any sort of like remodel type stuff. There's always hiccups and it is what it is. And I've got my seedlings all tucked in here. It's actually feels like it's like 50 something degrees outside. So I probably could have wheeled them out here and let them hang out here, but I really need to go get ready for the day. I need to go frost a cake. I need to finish. I need to iron all the tablecloths. I need to focus on tomorrow's big party and the guests that I'm gonna be having stay at our house this weekend. So thank you for being here. If you're new, please consider subscribing so you can see how the final, final after happens and you can see what's gonna happen with all these seedlings that we've got. There's so much green popping up in here. It's pretty encouraging. So I'm just grateful that we got the carpet out of here. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. If you want to watch more of my videos, I'll pop them here. Please consider subscribing if you're new and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.